Hello there, this is Brandon Falk and today I'm going to be showing you through a new IDA plugin I've been working on. And what this plugin allows you to do is load up all of the dependencies in the current database based on the import tables or load up a single unrelated file into the current database as well. So what I want to do here is show you how it all works. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to load up a exe, this FedEx thing that was sent to me, which is a fake AV, and it was sent to me over email, and I'm getting a bunch of them, so I decided to go through and analyze it. So, as I was looking through it, I was just getting really annoyed, because I'd click on all these functions, and they'd be all in the import tables, and I'd have to open kernel32 up in a different window, or run it all through a debugger, and take a memory snapshot, and uh, it's such a mess, and I've also noticed that IDA isn't very nice about loading up the proper symbols when you're doing debugging, so I just wanted to keep everything static, keep myself happy and not going through and trying to take memory snapshots and turn them into a database and send them over to friends. It's just a complete mess. So I came up with this one tool that does everything statically, and I'm going to go through here and I'm going to run it right now. So it gives you a couple options once you open it up initially. Now, there are three main options. One, you can open up a single file, which is just load up any file into the current database. It analyzes it and remaps all the imports. You can also load up all the dependencies, where it looks through all of the imports. Then it loads up all of the files that the imports depend on. And then it maps all of the exports to the imports and vice versa, so you're able to easily navigate and find the exports that the imports were pointing to. And there's also cancel, which is not technically a cancel, but it, it it's essentially a cancel that it doesn't load anything, but it does go through, list the uh, list all of the DLLs or anything else that's loaded currently into the database, as well as remap all of the imports and exports, just in case you broke something along the line. So I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to load up all of the dependencies. So I just have to select the resource folder, which in this case I'm going to go to my Z drive, which is a uh, virtual machine drive here for Windows XP, and I'm going to point it to System32. Press OK, goes through, loads up all the files, and starts analyzing them. So you can see it loaded up kernel32, user32, crypt UI, and time date. So I'm just going to wait for this to uh, analyze here as depends on some of the symbols being there for the function names and whatnot. And just gonna wait, shouldn't take too long. So there we go, and, and then it went through and remapped all of the imports to exports. So you can see now all of these imports have comments, repeatable comments on them, which point to the actual exports in the loaded files. So I could have renamed all of the imports to point to the proper things, but I wanted to make sure that the import tables stayed intact and that you're only using comments to hop to the the references in the other loaded programs or other loaded files just to keep it simpler and to make it so the the purity of the file is still there, just in case it does some weird import uh, technique. So I can go in and I can click on these now and these will bring up the actual functions uh, that these would call. So I can look into load library, it brings it up, all of the symbols are properly loaded, you can look deeper into load library, and it brings up all the symbols here as well, and everything's properly analyzed, and it looks like you're looking at the file as if it were opened on its own completely statically. Now, one thing you might have noticed is that there's a dependency here that isn't satisfied. Well, the reason for that is this NTDLL wasn't loaded because the main program didn't depend on it, but uh, whatever whatever file uh, load library is in depends on that. So the program doesn't automatically go through and recurse. However, oh, however, you're able to go through and uh, recurse through the program. So I'm actually going to go through and manually load using the file option that ntdll uh, dll here. So. System32, NTDLL, and I'm going to load this one up manually. So this just will take a couple seconds to analyze. shouldn't have to pause the video. And you can see it was added to the list of if loaded files. 
And, come on, here we go. And now you can see that this import has now been satisfied, and you can hop into here. And I could also go through, if I really wanted to, go through and run this uh, recursively as all dependencies. And this is going to go through all of the loaded files now and load up all those dependencies. Um, it also makes sure that it's not loading up the same file twice, just as a uh, um, little precaution. It sh should save some time, but I don't think it actually prevents you from overwriting anything. I think IDA does all that work for me. Uh, cross my fingers on that one. So I could go through and it will analyze all these files, all these new files that were loaded up. And technically you could just be running the program on and on and on again until it has no more dependencies to load up, in, in which case uh, you've probably spent a lot more time than you needed to, because from what I've found, going a couple deep is generally worth it. And uh, I've actually done this outside the video, going through too deep in dependencies, and this analyze takes about three to five minutes. So, uh, and I think too deep is generally enough. I mean, like all these DLLs is pretty much all you're gonna ever need. I mean, just even just kernel 32 and, and NTDLL should do everything for you. Um, I haven't tested this on Linux. I do have one Windows dependency in the uh, plugin itself where it looks for a uh, backslash instead of a forward slash. I always get this mixed up, so it's, it's one of those, but uh, it searches for the file name because I'm told by IDA that, say, version dot dll well it doesn't actually tell me version dot dll i think that's a uh something they should add it just tells me it needs version so i search through system 32 for version find version thir or version dot dll and i load that up um however along the line i do try and search uh when i'm doing that search through the directory i do look backwards try and find the trailing slash and then look for the actual name of the program so that would be an issue for you Linux guys, however, yeah, that can probably quickly be changed. Um, I just haven't been bothered and I'm getting a little bit too excited to wait to make a video. So everything I think works just fine. I haven't actually really used it besides just some test cases, but I can't imagine that it would do anything weird or funky. Um, but this is what it does. I think it's really useful, and I think every static analyst will probably want to be able to use this. So I put the sources below in an SVN repo. Feel free to check them out. Uh, the binary should be there as well. Um, I've only tested the 32 binary, but the 64 should work as well. Uh, and that's pretty much everything. So I hope you like it. I hope you check it out, and have fun.